Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we'll be learning how to use context managers within Python. So context managers allow us to properly manage resources so that we can specify exactly what we want to set up and tear down when working with certain objects. So for example, if anyone has ever watched my video on working with file objects, then I showed two different ways that we could work with files. And the first is like we currently see up here at the top uh, where we're opening the file and then doing something with it. In this case, we're just writing some text. And then we have to remember to close the file after we're done working with it. And also in that video, I showed uh, what I said was the recommended way of working with file objects. And that is using a context manager like we have here. So we can tell that this is a context manager because of the with statement here. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we no longer have to remember to close down the file after we're done working with it. And not only that, but this is also recommended because if we throw an error when working with this file, then it's still going to get closed properly. And that is why context managers are so useful. It handles the teardown of the resources for us so that we don't have to remember to do it. And the more that is handled for us automatically, the better. So this is great for files, but it's useful for so many different resources. So for example, we could use this to uh, connect to and close databases automatically. Uh, we could acquire and release locks. Uh, there's plenty of use cases you'll find for these uh, you know, down the road. So in this video, we'll be learning how to write our own context managers uh, to handle custom resources. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are a couple of different ways that we can write out our own context managers. We can either do this by using a class or by using a function with a decorator. And we'll look at both of those in this video. So to start off, let's just replicate the functionality that we saw when using the uh, context manager when opening a file. So we'll create a context manager that opens the file for us and then automatically closes the file when we're done with it. So first, we'll use a class to create this context manager because I think it shows a little more clearly what's going on. Um, so I have a snippet in my snippets file here that we will use to get us started so you don't have to watch me type all this out. So I'm just going to copy this part here and paste it in. I'm just gonna go ahead and overwrite that and then we will walk through this. Now, if you're unfamiliar with working with classes and wanna learn more about working with classes in Python, then I do have a series specifically on that and I'll link to that in the description section below. Uh, that series will explain everything that you need to know about the self parameter here and the init method and all of that. So for the sake of time, I'm not really gonna go into a lot of detail of the object-oriented concepts within this video. Um, okay, so with that said, we have a class here called open file. And inside that class, we have three special methods. So first we have that init method, which you've probably seen if you've used classes before. And we also have these enter and exit methods. So the enter and exit methods are going to be the setup and teardown of our context manager. So we wanna set up a couple of things in our init method. So the init method is going to accept the arguments that we pass into our class and also allow us to access the attributes that we set from our other methods. So you can see here that it takes a self parameter, which is just uh, the instance itself. And then we have a destination here. That's not very uh, specific. I'm instead gonna call this file name. And also on top of file name, I'm also gonna accept a mode argument there. So that file name will be the name of our file and the mode will be for opening this file for reading or writing or something like that. And to turn these into instance attributes so that we can access these from our other methods, we can just say self.filename is equal to file name. And then we will do the same thing for mode. So self.mode is equal to mode. Okay, so now within our inner method, which I said would be the setup part of our context manager, we're actually going to open our file. So within here, we can say self.file. So I'm creating a new instance variable there. And now we just want to open this file. So we will open self.filename, and we will open that with the mode of whatever we pass in, of self.mode. And if this isn't quite making sense just yet, then just stick with it and we will walk through this a couple of times. So now within this inner method, I'm actually going to return this file that we just that we just opened. So I'm going to return self.file. Now, when we return this, uh, what we return here will be the object that we're working with within our context manager. Okay, so to finish this example up, uh, now we need to do the exit method, which I said would be the teardown. And this is what gets run when we exit the context manager. So we wanna be sure that our file gets closed at this point. So 
we can just take this file that we created in the self.inner method on the setup and in the teardown, just do a self.file.close. Now the extra parameters here for the exit method are there for if we throw an exception and we could use those to access that information. Okay, so now let's use this context manager and walk through exactly what's going on. Uh, so to use this, we can use it just like we did before. So we'll say with, and I'm gonna use this open file class that we just created. And now this takes in a file name and the mode. So I'm just going to pass in a file name of sample.txt and we will pass this in with the mode of W, which is right. And then I'll say as F, and then within our context manager, we'll just do F dot write, and we'll just write to this file and say testing. And just to make sure that our context manager is working as it should, and to make sure that the file was closed outside of the context manager, and let's go ahead and print out the closed attribute of that file so that we can see if it was closed properly. So this should return uh, true outside of this context manager that the file was in fact closed after we were done working with it. Okay, so if I run what we currently have, then we can see that that returned true for that file being closed, so that's good. Um, and I have the sample.txt file open up here. If we open that up, then we can see that we did write the uh, text testing there, so that all worked. Okay, so now let's walk through the context manager and point out exactly what's going on. So first of all, when we run this part here with the open file class and pass in uh, the file name and the mode. What it does is it comes up here into the init method and sets those attributes. So we're setting this file name and mode. And then since we're using the with statement here, uh, what this does is it runs the code within our enter method. So that opens the file and then that file is returned. So we set this self.file variable equal to that open file with the file name and mode. And then we're returning that file variable. So our F variable down here within our context manager is then set to the return value from that enter method. So that is why F is a file object inside of our context manager here, because that is what was returned from our enter method. So now at this point with this entire line here, we have uh, ran the init method and set those attributes. And we've also run the enter method to do the setup of opening the file and returning that file. And now within the context manager here, we can just uh, work with this in any way that we'd like to. And then when we exit that block, that is whenever, and, and you know, unindent back here to the main part of the file, that is whenever it hits the exit part of the context manager. And when it runs that exit method, it comes in and does the self.file.close. So you can see that that is why f.close returned true after we have exited this context manager. Okay, so hopefully that cleared that up on working with uh, context managers using a class. But now that we've seen how to create our own context manager using a class, now let's see how to do this using a function. And using a function is how I most often use context managers, but that's just a personal preference. So I wanted to also show the, the class as well so that you know both ways. So to do this using a function, we're going to need to use the context lib module um, and to import the context manager decorator. So let's go ahead and import that here at the top. So we can just say from context lib, import context manager. And we can use this context manager decorator to decorate a generator function. Now, let me grab an example again from my snippets so that you don't have to watch me type all this out. Uh, and then we will walk through this again. Now I'm just going to uh, replace everything that we have here so far. Okay, so we're going to go through the same example. Uh, and this is the open file context manager that is equivalent to what our class was. So we can see that this is a little less code than our class was, but it can be a little more difficult to understand if you've never worked with decorators or generators before. Now, just like with the classes, if you'd like to learn more about decorators and generators, then I do have separate videos on those topics specifically. Um, but basically, if we look at our function, then we can see that we have one yield statement in here where we're doing this yield F. 
So everything before the yield statement is going to be equivalent to what our enter method of our class was. So this is going to be uh, the setup of the context manager. And then the yield is actually where the code within the with statement is going to run. And then everything after the yield statement is going to be equivalent to what was in the exit method of our class. So this is going to be the teardown of the context manager. Now, uh, technically, we should be using some try and finally statements in here to handle errors, but we'll take a look at that in just a second. But for now, let's look at our sample code using this context manager and walk through it just like we did with the class. And basically, we're doing the same thing that we did with our class code. So we're using the with statement here and calling our generator function. And our function takes in a file name and a mode. And then we are setting this to an F variable. Now, at this point, it's going to run everything up until our yield statement. So in our example here, it's going to come in and actually uh, create this F variable and open up that file with that file name and that mode. And then it's going to yield F and yield F is just like when we return that file within our enter uh, method of our class, it's going to yield F. And that is what this F variable here is going to equal. And that is what we're going to be working with within our context manager. So within our context manager, we can do whatever we like with this file. So in our example, we're just writing some more text. Now, after we exit uh, the with statement block, then it's going to run all of the code after the yield statement. So in our example, uh, that is closing our file. So after the yield statement, it comes up here and this is basically the teardown. So just like we did before, outside of our context manager, we are printing f.closed, and that will tell us if the file that we opened is closed or not. And since that is run in our teardown code, then we should see a return value of true for that, that it was in fact closed. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code. Oh, and we got an error here because whenever I type this out, this is context lib, not context lib. So context lib import context manager. So save that and rerun it. You can see that we got a true return value for F dot closed it being true. So that's good. And I still have that sample dot text file open up. So if I open that, then you can see that it wrote the new text. So that all worked properly. So one more thing, uh, when I said before that we should be using try and finally blocks to handle errors, we can do that by putting our setup and yield code within a try block. So if I come in here and do try and then indent this to where it is in the try block. And then we're going to put the teardown code into a finally block. So I'll do finally and then indent that to where it is in the finally block there. And doing that will ensure that even if we run into any errors, our teardown code is still going to get run. Um, Okay, so I think that's going to do it for the open file example, um, but that is not very practical because open is already a context manager within Python, and we can already do everything that we did here just using the open function. So now that we've seen how to replicate that built in functionality of the open function using both uh, classes and generators. Now let's look at a practical example that will build from scratch. Um, so let's say that we we're using Python to do some work in a lot of different directories. And we're constantly, uh, you know, seeding into those directories, doing some work and then seeding back to where we started. So let me grab a snippet of code here so that we can see what this would look like without a context manager. So I'm going to copy all of this code here and paste this in. Um, let's see, I will just replace all of this uh, from scratch. And we're also using the OS module there. So I'm going to have to also import that. So I'll import OS. Okay, so let's look at what we're trying to do here. So in our code, we can see that we are setting this CWD variable to our current working directory. So we're just doing OS dot get current working directory. And then we are changing to the directory where we want to do some work. And in this case, I have a uh, let me open up my sidebar here. I have uh, two directories here. I know that this is probably a little small on your screen, but basically in sample directory one, I have a few files and in sample directory two, I have a few files. So we are changing directory to sample directory one, and then we are listing out everything in that directory and just printing it. And then we're changing directory back to our current working directory, which is our original location. 
And you can see that we're doing this multiple times. So whenever we want to do this again with sample directory two, we are setting the CWD variable, which is our current working directory, changing directories, uh, printing out everything that is in there, and then changing directories back to our original. So if I run the code that we have now, then we can see that this works. So these are the files that exist in sample directory one, and these are the files that exist in sample directory two. Um, but this is a little inconvenient to save our current directory, switch directories, and then switch back to the original after we're done doing what we need to do. So if we look at this, then saving the current directory and switching to the destination is basically setting up for the work that needs to be done. And switching back to our original directory is basically the teardown. So these are things that we don't want to have to remember to do each time. So this is a good candidate for a context manager. So let's create one that does this. So I'm going to do this with a generator function like we saw in the second example, but you could also convert this to a class if you're more comfortable with that. Now I will create this underneath uh, our examples here so that we have those to reference. So first we're going to use the context manager decorator. So I will just paste that in. And now we want to uh, create our function. So I will just call this change dir. And what we're going to accept here is we want, when we do our setup, we are getting our current working directory. And then we want to change directory to this destination. Um, so let's take in a destination as a parameter there. So then within our function, now remember what I said about catching errors. We want to put our setup uh, in a try and a our teardown in a finally. So with our setup, now we want to get that current working directory. So it's just like we saw up here. So we will save the current directory that we are in into that CWD variable. And now we want to change directory uh, to our destination. So I'll do an os.change directory to this destination. And now we are done with our setup. So now we can just yield. Now we are not working with any variables inside of our context manager. So we don't actually have to yield anything. We can just say yield. So if you remember in the open file example, we did a yield F where we yielded that file object and we worked with that file object with in, or inside of our context manager, but we're not going to be working with any objects inside of our context manager. So putting yield there is perfectly fine. So, so far in our setup, we have the current working directory, which is our original directory. We have changed directory to our destination and yielded so that we're ready to do whatever we want in that destination. And now in the teardown, we just want to change directory back to the original. So if I copy that in and paste that there, then that will change directory back to that current working directory. Okay, so now instead of doing what we did up here using this code, I'm now going to use our context managers. So I'm just going to delete everything that we had there. And now we can use uh, the context managers to do basically the exact same thing, but a little bit more clean. So we can say with change dir, and now we want to pass in the destination. So our first destination, we'll just do sample dir one and we didn't return anything here with this yield statement. So we're just, instead of using as and putting a variable, we're not actually working with anything there. So we'll just jump directory and in, dir directly into the context manager. And now from in here, you can do anything within the directory that we just CD'd into. Um, so in our example, we were just printing out the list of that directory. So os.listdir, but you could do whatever you wanted there. You could create files or anything like that. So now we want to do this with our sample directory two as well. So I will just paste all of that in except using sample directory two uh, there. So now let's go ahead and save this and run it. And I'll scroll down here a little bit. So we can see that that works just like it did before by printing out the contents of those directories. But now we don't have to worry about the setup and teardown each time we use those context managers. Um, so, you know, before we were saving all this information and then had to remember to change back. And now we can reuse this context manager over and over and over. And we always know that those resources are going to be managed exactly how we want them to be managed. And we don't have to remember to do that on our own every single time. 
So that is a simple example of a practical context manager that you can create on your own, but these are used for many different things. So like I said, they can be used for opening and closing database connections, acquiring and releasing locks and all kinds of different stuff. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. I hope that now you have a pretty good idea for how you can use context managers to set up and tear down resources, and also how you can write your own from scratch. But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also, it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.